So um, an introduction to open intelligence, which is the term we use in balance view for the, the capacity to know. Uh, we'll do that in a moment. But you can look at your experience right now. What, what's looking through your eyes? What's listening to me speak? This is what we call open intelligence. And to make that quality about you more noticeable, just, just stop thinking for a moment. Stop the descriptions. Stop thinking. Admittedly, that can only occur for like a split second. But in that split second, what do you notice in your experience? What's looking, what's listening, the capacity to know, a, a, a presence that's obvious but maybe, maybe subtle. So this is what we call open intelligence. Now the conventional approach to life has been to focus on the descriptions, the thoughts, emotions and circumstances, sensations of, of our lives and to try and order them into a set of in, in balanced view, we just call all of these things data. So re rearranging thoughts, emotions, circumstances, sensations into what we consider to be a positive set of data. And that's the game of life, constantly sorting our experiences into positive, neutral and negative, trying to hold on to the positive, cultivate more positive experiences and to eradicate or modify the negative experiences. So this is, this is the conventional approach, you could say. And everyone here, I'm sure, is expert in that approach, including myself. And, um, and we do this because we don't have a, another way of relating to, to our, ourselves and others. So the way we try and achieve peace in ourselves is to hold on to what we consider to be positive, get rid of the negative, and there's the neutral things we don't care about. Now that mechanism that we apply to ourselves as individuals is exactly the same as it applies to two people in a relationship or groups of people in a family, say, or ultimately in countries. We, want, we as a country want to cultivate the things we consider to be positive and we want to eradicate and modify the things we consider negative, like other countries. So it's very profound to recognise this in your experience that your approach to yourself is a reflection of humanity's approach to itself and when we start to instead of focusing on our lives like a sorting machine and emphasize open intelligence what we're actually doing is emphasizing something that is the same for every human being on the planet and when we do that by, by default all of the systems that we come up with either as individuals or people reflects that open intelligence it's no longer about I'm right you're wrong you need to do it our way or we'll drop some bombs onto you until you see it our way. Um, you know, everyone knows this is a, the solution to the, that some groups of people um, are applying to try and make their, try and make their circumstances better and we, we all see the results. So it's very, it's very, very important that you, firstly, that you test what's being on offered here. And, and what's being offered here is, is a simple set of instructions and education to train up in, 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 in your fundamental nature, open intelligence, and then see what happens in your experience. So like we, like we just heard, the first uh, or the only practice of the Balanced View training is the recognition of open intelligence whenever you remember throughout your day. So the actual instruction is short moments of open intelligence repeated many times, become continuous. So what, by default, what that means is that your life does not need to change. So your thoughts, your emotions, your circumstances do not need to change in order to practice relying on open intelligence. And for me, that was like a, a lightning bolt. I'd spent my entire life trying to change everything about my life in order to feel okay. And so when I was introduced to a simple instruction, so if you're, if you're new, you can start by just stopping thinking whenever you remember or stop describing whenever you remember, just to identify open intelligence in your experience, then just relax. Then obviously all of the thoughts come back, all of the sensations come back, and then when you remember again, repeated many times, so when you remember again, you just, you just relax and acknowledge open intelligence and see what happens in your experience. So for me, 
pretty much since I was about 15. I was uh, really racked with depression, anxiety, boredom, panic attacks, uh, sexual desire, that was a good one. I thought if I could have as much sex as possible, that would sort out the depression and things like that. And um, it just made everything way, way more complicated. Uh, it was not a solution. And, um, and so, but you see, I didn't know any, any, any different. I really believed that if I could somehow control this flow, I would, I would be okay. And, um, and it, it's, it's easy to see, even if you're in an intimate relationship with somebody, that your data, the thoughts, emotions, and circumstances is not the same. Even if, you're, if you have an identical twin, um, the data is completely different. The thoughts, emotions, hopes, fears are completely different. So for humanity to believe that peace is gonna come about by rearranging this stuff, it's just, it's just nonsense. And basically, this, the, the, this approach to being a human being, i.e. sometime in the future, I will be okay if X, Y, and Z happens, that hasn't changed since the door, maybe since we stood up, picked up sticks and started knocking each other on the head with them. So, so it's, re it's really time, and this is what I find so powerful, is that we, we are so powerful and so, so special as, as animals, so to speak, that we can, we can actually have, have uh, uh, a say in our, ev our evolution. I mean, how amazing is that? Now, if you, you may well say, well, you're talking absolute nonsense. And uh, again, the solution or, or the, 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 um, the invitation would be for you to test the simple instructions that are provided in this training and test the support structures where it matters most in the midst of your everyday life. And so the importance and the profundity of this support structure, like Nina described, so the practice of short moments, the training, the training media, the community and then trainers, it's a whole support package designed for you to be able to implement wherever you are in the world, no matter how busy you are, no, uh, no matter what your life is like, it's very easy to avail yourself of the support. Now again, that might sound like an outrageous statement, but I would invite you to check the website out, balanceview.org, and you'll see that there's thousands of hours of talks and videos for free, books for free, trainings um, that are all uh, contribution-based. And, uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's a support structure that you can, you can test and take as much as you want and see what happens. But the only way you're going to find out the, about the efficacy of this is if you use it, not if you think about it. So thinking about how listening to talks or writing texts out is going to, is going to uh, provide you with more benefit isn't, isn't the um, suggestion. It's actually doing the, ins the simple instructions and then see what happens. I cannot tell you how incredible my life is now. Nothing's changed. My thoughts, my emotions. I'm getting fatter. I, in a few years, I'll look like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> and uh, and you see, these are the things. I'm getting older. I have more. I have more pain, not less pain. My my hands hurt continuously. I think I I've had RSI for like 20 years before it was even invented. I had it, <laughs> and. Uh, I have, you know, pins and needles in my arms. All of these things that were causing me great, great stress prior to this training are not noticed anymore. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I, I like it. I'd much rather have, you know, everything completely different. But I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. And everything as it is, is as it is, whether you're struggling against it or not. That's, that's just a fact. And it's, it's the limitation of our very black and white conventional thinking that just comes up with paradoxes. So for example, I could say, everyone here failed this morning in letting everything be as it is because you put clothes on. <laughs> Why did you do that? That wasn't letting everything be as it is. <coughs> but it would make for a very, very empty open meeting if I was sitting here naked. <laughs> so you see, it, it's impossible to, to to rationalize all of these instructions with, with our mind, which is amazing. The conventional mind is amazing. I mean, look what it's come up with. You know, the inventions, the internet, the, the rockets going out into space, all of these amazing um, advances 
but it is very limited because it's based on and, and this was so amazing, and I must have heard this talk at least 50 times, and every time I hear something brand new, and I've heard it, and I, I just like, so Candice said, um, everything in society mimics our, our, our mind, basically, the way we use our mind. And I was like, well, why haven't I heard that before? I mean, I have heard it before. But, um, so, so basically, the way we approach ourselves is we blame, we judge, and we criticize. It's called constructive criticism. We look at what doesn't work, and then the premise is, and this has been trained into us since we were little babies, that we are flawed and we need fixing. Obviously in a nice way. You know, like I shared this the other day, but when, when your parents read you a fairy tale, the story is always about some, usually some hero, a soldier, who needs to overcome something that's drastically wrong, and marry the princess and live happily ever after. So there's lots of things that need to be overcome in order to feel okay. Over and over and over and over again. There are many, many stories like this. So, and then religion and even science has that same basis. We are flawed and we need fixing. So that's how we approach ourselves and that's what we create as a human society. So all of the institutions are the same. Schools, education, everything. You need to improve in order to be okay. Now what would it be like if every, every, every morning for your, the entirety of your childhood your parents and everyone were saying you're perfect, you're amazing, everything about you is amazing, everything you do is amazing, there's nothing wrong. Now as an individual you can test this in, the, in this training but then see how just you doing that affects your relationship with your family, your children, your parents then you really see how this, basically you taking responsibility to test the Four Mainstays lifestyle has an effect on human society as a whole. It makes no sense, but it, 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 this is actually what happens. Society reflects our baseline approach to ourselves. So this is the power of the Balanced View Training. It's a grassroots movement, so that means each one of you taking it upon yourselves to test what's being said here. It's not about some special person banging the table, screaming at you, screaming about peace with a big vein pulsating in their fo forehead as they scream about peace and love and solutions and then go and dump 500 million tonnes of explosives on another country. It's just awful, 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 awful way to approach anyone. And the, and the problem is, this is how we've approached ourselves for our entire lives, basically dropping bombs on all of the things we don't like about ourselves, hoping that they're go we're going to eradicate them and they always pop back up. So it's very, very important to see the profundity of what's on offer here, but more, more importantly, test it for yourself and see what happens. And just finally, about letting things be as they are, my flatmate moved out the other day and then a new flatmate moved in, a rat, <laughs> and, uh, and so I could have just let things be as they are and allow it to wipe its bottom all over the cutlery and cups and saucepans and things like that. But I, had, I, I decided to rely on open intelligence and actually take measures to try and make him not come in. I think I've succeeded, but it involves having all the lights on and, and basically having a really, really restless night's sleep because every single noise I think it's my friend managing to get back in and do things with the cutlery. <laughs> and, uh, and so, but you see, all of this prior, prior to Balanced View would have caused me great uh, anger, frustration, irritation. I'd have been very, very angry and disrespectful with my landlord. To see that amidst all of that, there was practical action. You know, I was on my own. That's the, I, I'm such, such a pathetic man, I wanted my mother to sort it out for me. <laughs> you know, that was, that was the thing that kept coming into my mind, but I, ma I managed to sort it out. And um, so again, this morning I put clothes on so I could do the open meeting. I, I, I took action when, when it came to the, to the rat, my friend. But, this, but the, the difference, and you can test this for yourself, you'll still get irritated, you'll still get angry, but when you're relying on open intelligence and increasingly start to recognize the inseparability of open intelligence from afflictive data, it enables you to act in very empowering ways and not go down the old, the old route of blaming, judging, criticizing. It still might, might occur, 
you know, strong words can still be said, but it's totally different when it comes from this open perspective.